Masterson's want to come and stay, do they? That's jolly good, Louisa. They're people worth having. Yeah, there's more and more inquiries every day, but nobody's actually come yet. Well, it'll take time. I suppose I should advertise. And not if you want to be particular about your guests. Personal recommendation, that's how it's done. Now, I'm doing my best. Every party I go to, I become a positive bore about the virtues of the Benting Hotel. Sure. And, of course, everybody knows about your cooking. Well, I don't want to go slaving away in that bloody kitchen the rest of my life. Cooking hundreds of pies for Mavis, dinners for all and sundry. I bet you by the summer the place will be overflowing. Anyway, I thought you liked cooking. Oh, there's cooking and cooking. Done the shopping for your little dinner party, by the way. My first at the Bentink. Quite an occasion. How's that for a menu? Mm. Looks delicious. Pâté de foie gras, quail pudding. Oh, by the way, no garlic in anything. No garlic. She's the most awfully topping girl. I think you'll approve. Oh, that'll make a change. Yeah, I met her at that hunt ball in Hampshire last week. Same party. Dances divinely. Married? I should hope so. Yes, husband's in the army, convenient on a mission to Egypt. Well, she said she was going up to London to do some shopping this week, so I asked her to dine. Keen as mustard. Yes, she said, just like that. You're irresistible. That's your trouble. Uh, she likes roses. Does she now? Well, she can go on liking them. She's getting none here. I've got some nice spring flowers, nice and fresh and virginal. Well, I shall go out and buy myself a new waistcoat to impress her. <sighs> Looks like we've got a visitor wanting to stay, Mum. Have we now? Here, take the tray away, Mary. I'm here. Oh, there's a letter for you, huh? Indeed. Excuse me one moment. Who's our shrimp whiskers then? Gent by the name of Smith Barton, Major Smith Barton, DSO. How do you know all that? There was a letter sent here waiting for him to collect. Don't know that, it sounds like a trick. Coronet on the envelope. He seems a gentleman. Fred gave him a wag. All right, I'll see him. Very good. Hey, here, where's your respect? Very good, madam. If you care to step into Mrs. Trotter's room, sir, straight across the hall. Thank you. You might have to carry that lot out again. It's an hotel, isn't it? A private hotel. Any old bloke can take a room, call same as any other hotel. That depends. That all depends. Just back from the east. Been out there a longish trial. Looking for somewhere to put up, don't you know? I see, Major. I've been, been down in Suffolk, shooting with my cousin, Lord Dedham. Said he'd heard the old Benting had opened again, run by a damn fine woman who really knew how to cook. That's nice. Asked me to stay on, you know, down there. But the Dedhams live in a drafty barrack of a house, and, and, and my blood's a bit thin after all those years in the sun, so I upped sticks and made for London. Was you thinking of a set of rooms, Major? Oh, Lord, no. I'm an old campaigner, you know. I don't like a lot of fuss. If you've got a boot cupboard somewhere, it'll do me. Oh, well, I think we can do something a bit better than that. If you'll follow me. Thank you. Putting the Major in number 11, Star. Madam. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I wonder if I might have a loan of your sporting life. Well, certainly, sir. You're sure you've finished with it? He's better without it. Oh, very kind. Nicest part of London, this, I always think. Like an armchair. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wonder if I might have luncheon in my room. Um, cold pheasant and a bottle of claret, something like that. Certainly, Major. Did you hear that, Mary? Oh, I did, well, I did. Oh, very kind. Charming servants you have, ma'am. That old fossil stiff is a post. Lissy chooses not to be. <laughs> I only keep him on out of kindness. 
Of course, in India, one gets used to half-trained boys. Seems to have got his feet under the table nice and quick. Uh, he's a thought. We never get rid of him now he's here. And he wants every meal carried up to his room. Breakfast, lunch and tea, dinner. I've seen him before. There was a day not so long ago when no gentleman would have had his luncheon in his hotel. What does he think he's clubbed for? Oh, I don't know what some people are coming to these days. I may be old, but I still know what's what. But I reckon Major Whiskers is a bit of a sporting old gentleman. What do you say, Fred? Now, when Mr. Tyrrell and his guests have finished the suit, you put the light under the sole. Not before. And let me know when they're ready for me quail pudding, I'll bring it up myself. Did you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I heard you well. Don't light them candles till well, Mr. Tyrrell rings. Go well. And get done quick when it's over. Well, one you hanging about like a drunk at a wedding. Yes, well. Fell three out. Uh, probably brought down. They all interfered with. Not the horse's fault, sure of that. Real good and... Oh, well, you can't always win. What's your fancy for tomorrow, Major? Sultan's kiss and the two o'clock at Sandown. Absolute snip. Can't go wrong. I had it in confidence uh, from a fellow... Is this the Bentink Hotel? Uh, yes, madam. Mr. Tyrrell's party, Mrs. Travers. Uh, Mr. Tyrrell's guest. Will you follow me, madam? Nice looking filly, that. A bit of blood there. Highly strung, I shouldn't wonder. Be all right with the right jockey, aren't they, Major? <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, please show it. My dear Belinda, how nice to see you again. Good evening, Charles. Uh, do please sit down. Cold out. Raw. Yes, beastly. Horribly, no. How about something to warm you up? A glass of Madeira? No, thank you. Oh, well, perhaps a glass of champagne. Well, oh, don't open a bottle especially for me. Oh, heavens no. It's mother's milk to me. <laughs> unusual place this is. Not a bit like an hotel. No, oh, well, that's the idea. You see, Mrs. Trotter, who runs the place, thought it would be a good idea to make it more like a sort of country house, don't you know? How quaint. What fun it was last weekend, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. Really quite deavy. <laughs> Tubby Vernon dressing up as a footman and spilling the soup all over Admiral Squeezy Dick's shirt was really quite a lark, wasn't it? Yes, it was quite a lark, wasn't it? <laughs> I bet the old devil played footy-footy with you under the table. Yes, he did, actually. It was most awfully embarrassing. No, I don't blame him. What did you do? Oh, my mother taught me always to have a fork ready. To repel invaders, eh? <laughs> I must be careful. I say, that's the most awfully nice dress you're wearing. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. It was part of my trousseau. My sister said she thought it was rather risque. Uh. I'm staying with her in Paddington. Oh, Paddington. So handy for the park. Yes. I always seem to be cuckooing with some friend or relation or other when Basil's away. Well, I'm sure you're very welcome in every nest. <laughs> That's what's so nice about this place. One is so completely undisturbed. Private, if you know what I mean. One's own little nest. Oh, you'll have me tiddly, you know. Oh, nonsense. Mind you, there's rather a nice claret ahead. We don't want to spoil our palates. No. I say, I hope you're hungry. Quite famishard, actually. Oh, good, because Mrs. Trotter really is a very good cook. Was I boringly early, or is everyone else boringly late? Uh, well, there isn't uh, anyone else. I thought just a little intimate. Oh, no, Charles, I couldn't possibly. But you did say you'd oh, like but to. I had no idea. Well, you asked me to a dinner party in an hotel. I couldn't possibly dine with you alone. It would cause an absolute scandalare. It simply isn't done in Basil's regiment. Oh, my dearest Belinda, you are teasing me, aren't you? You know, it's awfully unkind to be such a tease. No, Charles, I'm not really. Really, I'm not. Oh, but no one will ever know, Belinda. Just one evening. It's all ready, and even cuckoos have to eat. Please, don't touch me, Charles. I never took you for a... for a cat. If Basil knew, he would shoot you. Shoot me? He shot a man in Durban for less. He, he shot him? You mean he killed him? He only grazed his finger, actually. But that was because the man moved. I see. Do please forgive me, Belinda. Silly mistake on my part. Yes, Charles, it was rather. You'd like to go home? Yes, I would.
My carriage wasn't ordered until 10.30. Then you'll stay. I knew you would. No, I won't. Then I'll find you a cab. Oh, I couldn't go in a hackney cab. Not at night. I'm sure Basil wouldn't mind just this once. Right under me quail pudding, would you, Mrs. Wilkin? What the hell are you doing down here? Sorry you couldn't stay longer. Now, you're sure you wouldn't like me to see you home? No, I think I'll be quite safe by myself. Just this once. Well, good night, Belinda. I hope we see each other again soon. So do I. Good night, Charles. Next time we'll have a proper party. Good night, Charles. even get her to the post. Well, I'll be damned. Saved our bet that time, didn't we, Fred? Stood up good and proper, was you? Well, I never did. Stupid woman. Typical stuffy middle-class army. Cut and run when she become aware of your dishonourable intentions, eh? Poor old Casino. I didn't so much as lay a finger on her. No, but you was going to, wasn't you? No garlic. Well, thank heavens there's some honest, decent women left in the world what's prepared to be faithful to their husbands and behave themselves. Thank you, Louisa, for those comforting and consoling words. <laughs> I don't think it's very funny. No, isn't it rather sad, really? Oh, Louisa, I do want to apologise after all the trouble you've taken. I really am most awfully sorry. Don't worry. Here, forget about the ladies for one night, eh? Sit down, enjoy my nice dinner. Just like you to take it on the chin without moaning. Thanks. Louisa, will you dine with me? Me? Yes. Do me the honour of dining with you. No, Charlie, not possible. Got another 50 pies to come out of the oven. Oh, Mrs Wilkin can take them and out of the I've oven for heaven's sake. i got all the stuff to prepare for Lady Manton's dinner party tomorrow night. That's tomorrow <coughs> night, not tonight. Well, relax, enjoy yourself tonight, take a night off. Well, no one's worked harder or deserves it more. I eat my own poison. Well, that'd be a laugh. It'd give me great pleasure if you would. And I do need cheering up. Well, I don't know. In fact, I'd say it was your duty to cheer me up. Well, aren't I more important than Lady Manton? All right, then, Mr. Misery. Yeah, everything's just about ready, I suppose I'll manage. Thank you, Mr. Tyrrell. I shall be pleased to accept your kind invitation to dinner. Just give me a moment, I'll tart myself up. Uh, Merriman. Uh, yes, sir. Put two bottles of the Klikova and Rosé 93 on ice, would you? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, that's nice, Mary. I always did my mother's hair. She was proud of it. She said it was the only beautiful thing she had left in the world. What about her daughter? Oh, go on, man. Yeah. Right. Oh, here we are. So. Wish I had a nice tiny waist like yours, Mum. Can't be more than 18 inches. Oh, that comes of not eating, Mary. Nothing but tea and toast for so long. Yeah, I ain't worn this, not since... Well, not since we come here. Wouldn't the gold necklace be nice, Mum? No, it's the jet tonight, it's got to be. Why's that? Well brought up ladies' maids, don't ask that sort of question, Mary. Now, yeah, Mr Tyrrell gave me that. Long time ago. How's that, then? Oh, you look beautiful, ma'am. You look like a real duchess, you do, really. Oh, blam, I'm glad I'm not one. What a laugh. Nothing to do all day except eat too much, sleep too much, talk too much. Oh, it's all nice fun when it's make-believe. Oh, <laughs> pink champagne's pushing the boat out of here, isn't it? Oh, it's a special occasion. I didn't even know we had any in the cellar. Uh, but Merriman and I knew, didn't we, Merriman? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, here's to a first-rate second-hand evening. <laughs> Well, shall we try this woman's cooking? <laughs> and uh, what would you say to your lady? She was sitting there. Well, with the first course, start off with the weather. The weather? <laughs> You can tell Mrs. Welkin this toast is like a soggy mattress. Uh, yes, ma'am. 
The weather don't sound too romantic to me. Oh, and it's, it's a way of sort of breaking the ice, you know? How the fog stopped the pheasants flying, well, it meant more. Well, that's if she's interested in shooting. Well, you lady likes shooting, you want to watch out. Oh, well, perhaps if she likes hunting, we might consider together how many days the beaver has been stopped by frost this season. Then go over every yard of that splendid hunt we had with the Warwickshire last November, never missing a fence. Then we could consider the merits of the big bay gelding. Oh, well, she likes tiddlywinks. Then we shall play at tiddlywinks later. Just now it is essential to return to the weather. Why? Because, just as I am suggesting that we should go skating together on the seventh time, a thought strikes me. Is the lady cold? Well, I've immediately all attention and apprehension. I must find out. Is her tiny hand frozen? Yes, yeah, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> By the time I'd finished with her, she looked like a real duchess. She did, really. How do you know what a duchess looks like? Have you ever seen one? Oh, not really. Only in pictures. Well, she's acting like one, and that's a fact. Soggy toast, indeed. What does she expect leaving me to cook the old dinner single-handed at the last minute? I bet you there'll be a moan about the quail pudding next. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, now, the time is ripe to embark upon more serious subjects. Such important matters as where the lady is staying for us. Oh, that's easy. Windsor Castle, if the Queen will weather it. Louisa, I said serious. Like what horrible no play she's been to, and what Divi house parties, <laughs> and where she denarried before dancing with that divine partnerino. Oh, God. <laughs> and who's been popping into bed with who, no doubt? Put rather crudely, yes. Well, if you will excuse our Amy. Ah. And what do you think your lady would say to that? She would be enchanted. She'd say it seems a shame to eat it. They always do. She'd say that she'd heard this Mrs Trotter was not only the best cook in London, but a most beautiful woman to boot. And, of course, I'd have to explain that Mrs Trotter was, in reality, a nasty old dragon with a face like the back end of a horse bus. Yeah, you better watch it, Mr Tyrrell. You'll get a clear in a lug hole. <laughs> Hi, Jinx up there, Mr. Miniman. Yeah. Hi, Jinx, it is uh, no mistake. It's perky, uh, Mrs. Trotter. Oh, my friend. But oh, fly, such a change, you know. When she left the village, she was shy. for the oars, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. I think it's about time your lady went back to her pots and pans. No, not quite. Not till I've told her that her hair is like the finest gossamer seen at dewy dawn, her eyes like twin pools of rare delight, her cheeks like blushing clouds. <laughs> what about Hampstead's? Ah, uh, uh, a ring of pearls culled from an eastern crown. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Where was that? Cheeks like blushing clouds. Oh, yes. Um, lips like two rosebuds newly oped in June. Neck like a column of alabaster. Yeah, I think that's about far enough, isn't it? Yes. Then I tell her that I love her. And your magic spell always works, eh? No. It's rather like hooking a salmon. That's the real sport of the thing. It's just a sport, is it? I suppose it is. Usually. And you always win in the end. No. Sometimes the lady says her carriage is waiting. I go carriage. She wants two biscuits and a pair. She can whistle for them as far as I'm concerned. It's not my job. Eh? Hey. Well, there's pears there. Eh, hey, not too ripe. It's the best they had left in the market. 
After 11 she gets me down a note. Would I go and do the marketing for Lady Manton's in her place? Oh, it's not right, Mr Merriman. I can't do it. We can only do us do our best, Mrs. Wakely, I suspect. Oh, yes. But I never come back. Oh, Major Whiskers is still in bed. As I was making up his fire, he was telling me about how he fought the fierce pythons of the northwest frontier of India. The Tarns. Huh? The Tarns. Oh, yes, that's right. He said if they didn't have us to fight, they'd fight each other for the fun of it. Just like the Welsh. Mr. Merriman, he'd like some biscuits and a glass of light port at 11. Mm. And the lawn of your sporting paper, Mr. Stye, if you'd be so obliging. At all. That's all. But I don't know how I'm ever going to get his room done at this rate. Morning. Hello. Will you come out to lunch with me? How can I? I'm supposed to be running an hotel, not waltzing around the West End with you. Are you a up? Thank you, Merriman. Do you want a cup? Uh, no, thank you. This pair's not right. No, 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 well, take it away, then. Yes, well, Don't bring me on right pairs in future. No, no, no. Oh, Charlie, what have we gone and done? What will people say? What will they think? No one will know. Well, of course, they'll know the servants will find out, and everyone will know. But does it matter? Have you heard that Mrs Trotter at the Bentic tucks up with her customers? I want to drink, that's my trouble. You mean the whole thing was just to cheer me up? No, I don't mean that. Of course I don't. You know very well I don't. No, your magic spell wouldn't have worked unless I wanted it to. I just feel in me bones it's dangerous. We can't go back now. No, but we can take a pull. A real pull. Stop. Yeah. Is that what you really want? Oh, of course it's not what I want. Can't always have what you want in life, can you? Hardly ever come to that. I don't know. I just don't know. Look, I've got all the accounts to do. Got that dinner party for 24 tonight. Yes. All right. Just looking up, Mrs. Trotter. Sorry, we're late. We was uh, held up in the fog. Dinner go all right? Yeah, I think they was highly delighted. Good night, then. I'll turn the lights out. Good night, madam.
Good morning, General. Good morning. 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 There's a message coming out of the kitchen from the German embassy. Can you do dinner for 30 Thursday night? Oh, my God. I'll join you, Charlie. No, I can't. But Mrs. Welkin can. Yeah, she can do it. I don't stand here like death warmed up. What's the matter? It wasn't Mrs. Welkin the answer, Mum? Well, I'm going to the theatre that night to see the country girl so you can tell them the answer's no. Very good, Mum. German embassy. It's nothing but little bleeding foreigners anyhow. Chocolate cake, Fred. You yeah, look at that, that's your favourite. <laughs> well, that's a turn up for the book and no mistake. Thirty for Thursday? She's gone by me and no mistake. That's what she said. Well, I suppose she's forgotten there's people staying in this hotel who have to be cooked for as well. Mm. I'm all coming. Well, she's just gone by me, Mr. Merriman, that's a fact. I mean, there's nobody I've worked for who looked after her servants better than Mrs. Trotter did. Really thoughtful. Oh, granted, her temper's never been good. But it was an argy-bargy every so often. This spoony business... Uh. Oh, I don't know, I really don't. Oh, isn't it lovely? Oh, tar ever so much. <laughs> I'm going to wear this when we get a hair scot. That'll put them lady doodals noses out of joint. Oh, it's honeysuckle. Look. I am your honey, honeysuckle. You are my bee. A dee da da. Oh, Charlie, darling. <laughs> oh, I feel tingly all over. Like when I had measles, but nicer. I don't care about nothing. I don't care if it's Christmas or Easter. I must be going potty. I really must. Oh, it's nice, though. It's like being up in the air somewhere. Everything else is ever so small except just us. Do you feel like that? Very happy. Not quite like that. Why well, ain't you ever felt like that? You know, all sort of giddy. Yes, I have. A long time ago, when I was about 15, I developed an absolute passion for one of the girls who worked in the dairy at home on the farm. Oh, I was much too shy even to talk to her. I just gazed from afar in adoration. <laughs> <laughs> I soon grew out of it. Oh, I hope I don't grow out of it too quick. Here, Charlie. Come on, let's. What's this time of day? Oh, what's the matter what time it is? But Mary will be later to turn up my bed. Oh, don't be so stuffy. Come on up to my room. Nobody turns down my bed. It's nice and warm and cosy up there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Merriman. Yeah? This passion Mrs. Trotter has. Yeah? It's changed her nature. Terrible she seems to have gone. Very flighty. I suppose it's marvellous for her being in love and all that. Maybe you're marvellous for her, but it's not at all marvellous for us, Mary. More like sitting on a powder cake for us. An explosion, is it, Mr. Merriman? Any second of the day. Order and sense out of the window. Confusion reigns. The country girl instead of the German embassy. If you get my drift. Not entirely, Mr. Merriman. Hmm. Uh, there was a chef in a hotel where I worked once. He had a great touch with fish. Could make a common piece of egg taste like turbot. But when he had a passion on him, a bit of spaniel he had one once a week, why well, then, I tell you the truth, he could make soul taste worse than skate. That's what it can do to a normal, sane human being. If she's took bad, then. Uh, I had hoped to die peace from my bed. It'll be thankful release when it comes, but not in the ruins of the Bentic Hotel. You have a most powerful imagination, Mr. Merriman. Uh, lucky for some, but not for others. What you have in this world, you pay for. Good afternoon, sir. I'd like to see a room, please. Uh, yes, sir. Sitting room, bedroom, bathroom. Do you have such arrangements? Yes, sir. Good. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I can't take on any new guests, not without the proprietor's permission. Well, may I see the proprietor, then? Mrs. Trotter's not here, I'm afraid, sir. When will she be back? I've no idea, sir. She didn't say. Uh, Major, excuse me. Mrs. Trotter didn't mention to you when she'd be back, did she? Uh, no. She's been out a lot lately. 
In fact, a great deal. Well, in the meantime, perhaps I could look at the rooms available. I have a cab waiting outside. Well, not without Mrs. Trotter being here. She's very particular, you see. What exactly do you mean to imply by that remark? Oh, nothing at all, sir. It's nothing personal. You'll bear me out there, won't you, Major? Uh, yes, Mrs. Trotter's uh, very particular. And where, by the way, sir, do you come into it? Oh, not at all, really. I'm just staying here, don't you know? Well, I'm delighted to hear that somebody is. I should be obliged if you would give Mrs. Trotter my card with my compliments and tell her that in future I shall not be bothering her anymore. There are plenty of hotels in London where they do have rooms. Yes, my lord. I'm exceedingly sorry, my lord. The sorrow is mutual. Good day. Do you think I did right, Major? Oh, sure you did, Star. Sure you did. Well, I hope so. Fred didn't wag his tail or anything. Still... Mrs. Trotter has a real weakness for lords. Yeah, but she does like to pick them herself. That's true. And I don't think this one was anything special in the way of lords. Still, what a way to run a hotel, eh, Major? Mm. Your papa was the best fag master I ever had at Eden. Always gave me a tip for everything I did. You know, a halfpenny or a sausage or something. Not like that fellow who messed with him, Duckworth. He was a real brute. If his eggs or his toast weren't done exactly right, he used to give me a terrible walloping. I hated that fellow's guts. I never thought I should ever feel sorry for him, but I did. He joined some smart cavalry regiment, treated his men just like he'd treated me at school. And they wouldn't stand for it. They mutinied. Duckworth was court-martial. Last time I saw him, he was an old man of 45, drinking himself to death in poodles. Gone to pot. I rather like this place. What do you mean? Well, you're not oh, implying that Louisa Trotter bullies the serf. Oh, Lord, no, she's the most charming woman. It's just, it's, uh, rather going to the dogs. You probably wouldn't notice, but uh, the servants chatter away to me. They uh, pour out their troubles to the old Dutch uncle. It's very sad. They're not at all happy at present. In fact, I think Star and the Cook are thinking of leaving. I say, that, that is bad. I'd be sad to have to go myself. It's a, it's a great pity. Especially after all they tell me about Mrs. Trotter making such a great effort to, to get the hotel open in the first place. Yes, indeed. Hmm. It's all right. I don't suppose there's anything you and I can do about it. A nice drop of port, that. Yes, it's uh, Croft 72. Hmm? I brought it up from home. Father's been forbidden to drink the stuff to his fury. How is he? Hmm. Not awfully good, actually. He had a very bad fall out hunting a couple of months ago. Hasn't got right. It's his back, really. None of the doctors seem to be able to do anything. He and my mama are just off to New York to see some quack over there. Oh, very sorry. I was given a pipe of port by a very generous godfather as a christening present. Sad to say I never touched a drop of it. Well, how was that? When I was 21 and the stuff was just ready to drink, I had to sell a lot to pay my debts. Probably save me from getting chronic gout. Oh, well, I'd better turn in. We find to look for another billet tomorrow. Good night, Charlie. Thanks for the port. Good night, sir. General and Mrs. Maxwell come in for a few days. I think I'll put them in uh, number five. So make sure it's all clean and ready. Yes, ma'am. Will it be the Quaid and Flowers in there? No flowers. He's only a general, not a pope. And Mr. Tyrrell's going away. I see, ma'am. Got to go off with his ma and pa to America. How long will he be gone for? No idea. Well, anyway, it'll give me the chance to give his room a real keynote. That's right. Hey, goodbye, Mr. Joe. Bye, Fred. Bye, Mary. Look after Mrs. Trotter, won't you? Very well, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Might get 
The boat back on an even keel now, Fred. Eh? Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Damn nice dog, that of yours. Yes, my sir. I had a dog very like yours myself once in India. Marvellous ratter. I bet Fred's a good dog with a rat. I dare say, Major. Nice sporting sort of dog. By the way, Star, there's a good thing going in the two o'clock at Plumpton. Near certainty. Nice price, too. Timberlino. Put a giddy on him for me, will you? Yes, my dear. The guinea, you see, Major? That's right. If you could advance me the money, I should be most grateful. Uh, of course, you get 50% of the winnings at 14 to 1. Very well, Major. Much obliged, sir. Is Mrs. Trotter alone? Uh, yes, sir, she is. Mm. Come on, Fred. Time you had your wash and brush up. Then maybe we'll have a look around for a rat. I can certainly smell one, quite clearly. I wonder if I might have a word with him, Mr. Trotter. Yeah, of course you can, Major. Come in. It's, it's a bit awkward. The fact is, I've a favour to ask of you. About money, is it? Uh, yes, it is, rather. Um, shortage, you say. Te temporary shortage, you say. Do you see, it's, it's been a bit difficult lately, trustees being a bit tiresome. Of course, it, it, won't, it won't be long now. It's just a question of getting things sorted out. Of course, I realise I, I can't go on staying here with my bill unpaid. Of course you can, Major. This old place is humming like a top. It's not going to ruin us. Wouldn't be the same without you. Oh, I said it's awful, awfully civil of you, ma'am. I really must awfully grateful. Just forget it. Take a pew. We'll have a glass of wine and drown our sorrows. Had any news of Charlie Terrell? Yeah, just had a postcard. Dreadful voyage, sick as cats all the way, and New York is cold as charity. Oh, Mary, a bottle of wine, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. And not that muck you bought up last time. Bottle of the Bollinger 93. Bollinger, All right for you, Major. Uh, He's short of the tinkle. That's old Whiskers' trouble. How can you tell that, Mr. Starr? You always tell when they get specially friendly and confidential. Then borrow a guinea off you to put on a certainty. Mr. Starr says that Major Whiskers is short of money, Mr. Merriman. Can that be true? <laughs> He's not paying for this wine, I can tell you that. She's paying for it. Drinking the profits. Yeah. But how can a gentleman not have any money? Well, it's not that he hasn't got any money, it's just that he hasn't got any available. He never will have any available. People like him never do and never will. Money just slips through their hands like a piece of wet soap, as you might say. Uh, couldn't happen to a servant, working man, as you might say. Only to a gentleman. Yes, sir. Oh, it's in the nature of things, Mary. If there's nothing you can do about it. Now, don't you listen to old gloom, Mary. People like the Major have their ups and downs, that's all. One day soon you'll find he'd be suddenly so flush he'd be taking a set of rooms just to himself. And buying a string of racehorses into the bargain. Oh, sorry, ma'am. As Mr. Tyrrell was away, I thought I'd get his bedroom curtains washed. All right, Mary. Mary, come in here. Sit down. What? I said sit down, cloth ears. I'm going to have a baby. Been round the doctors and nine weeks gone. Oh, what a terrible thing. Oh, don't look so bloody po-faced. Sure, even in Wales, people make mistakes sometimes. Oh, what are you going to do? Are you going round... I mean, there are... No, I'm not. Can anyone do me in with dirty knitting needles? Anyway, I happen to believe if God makes a baby, has a reason to, and you have to lump it. 
And no one's to know about it except you and me. But Mr. Tyrrell will have to know. No, he won't. And you won't tell no one. No, I won't. Will you swear on it? Cross my heart and hope to die. Well, it's no panic. Be all right for a bit. Then when it starts to show, I'll go away somewhere. Stop all me outside cooking. And you'll have to run this place. But I couldn't, Mum. I never could. You will when I'll finish with you. Now, the credit's bigger than the debit, so you subtract the debit, and that makes that 11 pounds, 3 shillings, and 5 pence with farthings, right? Now, that's profit. That's not bad for one day. Now, I keep all the cash in here, locked up, always. And when there's enough, you take round the bank in St. James Street. Well, what's enough? Well, when it's nice and heavy, you have to use your survey. Oh, I see. Right, next page. Now, tomorrow's Friday, so we have to pay all them bills. We'll make a list of them. Now, you want to answer all of that as the day they come. That way it's more polite, especially people inquiring about rooms and that. Have a look at them. Well, how can I tell if they're the right sort of people, ma'am? Not being a snob like you. Oh, there's ways of telling. Now, here's one from a Mr Worthington Jones. He's not in Uzu, I've looked. Might be all right. On the other hand, he might not. He might have just tacked the Worthington onto the Jones for luck. It's nice paper, it's handmade and it's white. Now, never trust coloured papers. And the address is printed proper, from a plate. You feel that? Now, that's engraved. Common people wouldn't know about that. I see. So you just write that to Mr Worthington Jones, thanking him for his esteemed inquiry, etc. But supposing when he comes here, I don't know if he's right or wrong? Oh, you can always ask Star or Merriment. They'll have quite a good idea. If you're really stuck, you can ask old Major Whiskers. He might not be here. Oh, he'll be here, all right. I reckon, like the poor, he'll always be with us. Charlie, my dear fellow, how splendid to see you again. Thank you. Ah, my goodness, how we've all missed you. Oh, well, the place seems buzzing. Oh, yes, going splendidly, full up with the most awfully good lot of people. I, I say, I was sorry to see about your father. Yes, uh, that's been pretty grim. In the end, quite frankly, it was a merciful release when he did die. Glass port? Well, if you'll forgive me, I've rather a lot to do. Hello, Merriman. You well? Oh, fairish, my lord. Uh, middling, you might say, in the circumstances, but uh, if I might be allowed to say so, my lord, it's as good as a tonic to have you back with us. Thank you. Uh, be a good fellow and bring a bottle of wine into Mrs. Uh, Trotter's room, will you? Uh, she's not there, my lord, uh, but then you know that. Well, no, I didn't. Been away on the sick list a goodish time, hasn't she, Merriman? Oh, a fair bit of time now, my lord. Well, what's wrong with her? Oh, a bit off colour, out of sorts, gone away somewhere. Really? Very strange. I mean, who looks after the hotel? Uh, Miss Phillips is in charge since Mrs. Trotter left. Miss Phillips? Mm. Oh, well, thank you, madam. So you're Miss Phillips, are you, Mary? Oh, sir, my lord, we wasn't expecting you back, my lord. Your room's not ready. Oh, I was only passing through. What's all this about Mrs. Trotter? Well, she was took poorly with her nerves and all that, and the doctor said she had to go away and rest. But I had a letter from her just before I said, well, she didn't say anything about it. Well, um, she said to me she didn't want to worry you, you with troubles enough of your own. Where is she, Mary? I don't know, sir, not for sure. Somewhere on the coast, been travelling about, you know. Mary, I want to know where she is. I swore I'd not say to anyone, I can't tell you. what I was going to ask. Oh, crikey, Charlie, you didn't have to give me a turn. I'm oh, sorry about your dad. So you're Lord Hazelmere now, eh? Hey? So it's a girl, is it? Kill that Mary. Not her fault. I found these. Oh, can I... They're rather out of date. Did you find that at the baby? Worked it out. Oh. Well, it's three hours on the train down here from London. Plenty of time to think. You left the hotel just as things were beginning to get busy. That didn't sound like the Louisa Trotter I used to know. She wouldn't have left that place even if she was dying, unless she had something she had to hide. 
from me, from everyone. It didn't take Sherlock Holmes to guess what it was. I ain't been too clever, have I? They all know. No, no one else. Was it bad? Well, it was a bit rough being the first. Why, Louisa? Why didn't you tell me? Well, it's none of your business, is it, my mess? I've got to clear it up. God, you are pig-headed sometimes. None of my business, how dare you? Oh, for heaven's sake, it's not your fault. Well, men are born to chase after women, aren't they? Otherwise, there'd be no human race. And women have got to watch out, or they cop it. Oh, I broke my own rules, I knew what I was doing. It's a nice little baby. It's nice and healthy. No trouble, not like her mother. You really thought you'd get away with it? Well, I nearly did. Another week, clean and clever. Not very clever. What were you going to do with her? Well, I hadn't worked it out, not exactly, but... She'd be looked after proper. She won't lack for nothing. Except a mother and a father. Didn't need to say that. I think I did. Louisa, I want you to marry me. Oh, you're a real gentleman, Charlie. I say that for you. You don't have to do the honourable thing, not this time. I love you, you silly woman. Yeah, but would you have asked me to marry if it hadn't been for the baby? Quite frankly, I don't know. It's not a very fair question. That's the greatest compliment I'm likely to be paid in my little life. And I do appreciate it, honest, but... But you don't love me. No, it's not that. It's... Well, I'm just not cut out to be a wife. Anyone's wife. I mean, look at that baby. It's a nice enough little baby. I don't love it. I mean, it could be anyone's as far as I'm concerned. I don't know why I'm just made like that. I wouldn't be no good as Lady Hazelmere. I'm best left as Louisa Trotter, eh? It's best be honest about things, eh? Not to pull the wool. Only leads to trouble later on. Yes. It was a wonderful thing what we ate. I shall never forget it ever. But it's over. So, best to frame it, eh? Then we'll always have it to look back on when things is bad. Well, you're bound to feel a bit low after the baby. Perhaps you'll change your mind. Oh, I ain't been too bad. Quiet, this place gets me down. It's like a cemetery with seagulls. All I want to do is get back to noisy old London and my hotel. Louisa, would you mind if I took charge of the baby? One of the grooms and his wife at home in the country have just lost their child. They're an awfully nice couple. I think oh, they'd be very... Yeah, that, that's a good idea. May I go and take a look at her? Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Hello, oh, thanks, sir. Morning, Mary. Morning. Morning, Fred. No, no one's speaking to Fred this morning, sir. Yeah. Got him all dolled up, ready to greet Mrs. Trotter, and what does he do but Miss Parade? Some lady friend down St. James's Square. I bet Fred's the devil with the ladies. By the way, Major, Mrs. Trotter sends her compliments and will be obliged if you call on her in her room. That's your convenience. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Poor old Major Whiskers. Can't help feeling sorry for him. He hasn't had a bad run for no money. When I saw your bill was still unpaid, Major, I couldn't hardly believe my eyes. I, I really, I'm most dreadfully sorry. I, I, I thought I'd best wait till you got back to explain. You can't live on tick all your life, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm expecting a draft any day now. I tell you what, I'll go down to the bank again this morning. Come off it, Major. Any draft you get goes straight on the ponies. Now, this hotel ain't run as a charitable institution, not no more. You've all been so jolly kind to me here. Rather dug in now. I just wish I could think of a way of, of paying you back. I can think of one, Major. 
Good afternoon, my lord. Lady. Major? Ah. Uh, Henry! Hello, Barty, old boy. Haven't seen you for years. Anthea, how splendid to see you again. Hope you're both well. Follow me, if you will. Put up here before? No. Had to close up the house in Belgrave Square. Too big. First class place at wonderful cooking. Splendid. I hear there's a fine lot of partridges about in Norfolk this season. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hello, sir. My lord. Hello, Fred. I see we're celebrating Mrs. Trotter's return. Yes, my lord. We're all highly delighted at her recovery. And so am I. Oh, Merriman, a bottle of wine in Mrs. Trotter's room, if you please. You're very good, my lord. Come back then. Well, I'm glad. Of course I have. This is my home. <laughs>